So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be learning today. So one of the wonderful things that you're going to learn is how to actually create a um, basic t table. And what does that mean? I also am going to point out to you that you can not only create this t table and <clears throat> how to do it, you can apply the information that I'll be giving you onto your cover letter as well. Uh, we're going to talk about the three advantages and more of networking. I'm going to also point out to you why it's important to leave some of your experience off and your qualifications that go beyond what the company is looking for. We're also going to talk about some of the common pitfalls that are you know, actually thrown at us. And instead of saying we didn't hire you because of age, even though that is illegal to say that, they'll say comments to you like we really feel you're overqualified. So we're going to really drill down on that. And then we're going to talk about how to actually keep that momentum going. You know, looking for a job is a job and it is enduring and it can be difficult. So let's talk about how do you keep that momentum going and stay positive about it while you're doing it. So before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about some of the good news. So I would like to hear from you just in one word. Uh, in the chat, because I want you to get used to using the chat if you never have used it. Uh, one word, what has your job search been like so far? Now, please um, don't use any words that wouldn't you wouldn't use in a professional interview. So in one word, the question is, how's your job search been going so far? And Sheila, if you wouldn't mind turning your camera back on and telling me what somebody's some of the responses are, I'd really appreciate that. Oh my goodness, frustrating, boring, yes. challenging, difficult, complicated, slow, demoralizing. Oh. Thank promising. you, Sheila. Yeah, so promising. we have some promising ones too. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I am really, really appreciate your honesty on this because looking for a job can be so frustrating. It can be very difficult to do. And so how do you continue to do it when you have people say stuff to you like, um, we're not going to be able to hire you at this time because we feel that you're overqualified and, and you end up leaving that interview very, very frustrated, wondering what, what do you mean overqualified? I need a job. So I want to talk to you about that. And I also want to remind you of the value that you bring to the employer. So I love this slide because it says what Harvard Business Review is finding out right now is that older workers are of more value oftentimes. We have uh, great knowledge, we have adaptability, uh, we are punctual, we're dependable, uh, we have great work experience. We don't need to be what I call glorified babysitting. Uh, we're men and women of our word. Uh, when we're asked to do something, we do it to the best of our ability. It does show the employer that, you know what, they, we have a lot to bring to the table here. And when I'm advocating for us with employers, I'm talking to them also about, have you considered the older generation and what value they would bring to your business? As opposed to, they'll call me up and say, Glory, just send me some people. I need some people. Well, like I say, I'm advocating with the employers all the time to say, you know what, I, I've got some really talented people, but because you're stuck in your ways and you believe that a person who is older who isn't going to bring any value to you, I want to challenge you on that thought. But you know what, I also want to challenge you on what are you saying at the interview? So if you're being asked a question, tell me about yourself. Are you saying stuff like, well, I'm only going to work for the next couple of years and I plan on retiring. I'm out of here. And what has actually changed since you last looked for work? Well, goodness, there's a lot that's changed. One of the things that's changed is matching your skills to the skills that are listed. You know, I was taught years ago that I do one resume and then I just send that out to every job that I'm interested in applying for. Well, that is not the way it works anymore. It is very, very important for you to tailor your resume towards the job you're applying for. Match your skills to the skills that are listed. And I've had people say to me, good grief, Gloria, are you expecting me to do five resumes for five jobs I'm going to apply for? Yes, that's exactly what I'm expecting you to do. Now, you do not need to reinvent the wheel. So what I want to see is that you've got an original foundation good resume. And how you know it's a good resume is you've worked with us at the Career Force, and we have 
coached you through what needs to be on that resume. And let's say that you're going to go out and apply for a job. First, you read that job description and you take the bullets, or not the bullet points necessarily, but the points that the employer is looking for off that job description and make sure that it's on your resume if those are skills that you can do. Another thing we're going to talk a little bit about is networking. It is still the truth that the easiest way to get a job is through who you know. So what I find is after you've been job searching for a while and you've maybe interviewed for a couple times and things just don't feel like they're working out, uh, your demeanor changes and rightly so. But what I find is even your body language changes. So your head is down, your shoulders are forward, you're discouraged. I want you to lift that head up, throw them shoulders back and tell everyone that you run into, hey, I'm looking for a job. Do you know of anybody that's hiring? Hey, I'm looking for a job. Do you know anybody that's hiring? Use your networking. You know, I always say that we paid a very, very high price for the wisdom that we have. Up to today, we paid a high price for that. So let's turn that around and convince the employer that I'm not only the best person for the job, I believe I can make you a lot of money. And in turn, I'll make some money too. Get that out there when you're interviewing. How about teleconferencing? Teleconferencing has changed in a big way too. The beautiful thing about this is that we're teleconferencing right now. So you've done a little bit of writing in the chat. Um, just being on this virtual workshop is part of teleconferencing. Another service that we offer at the Career Force is if you have a virtual interview coming up, let us practice with you. When we're doing the practice, we're going to talk about the questions that they're more than likely going to ask you. We're going to talk about your background. You'll see that one for one, I have the lights um, turned down in this room today because of my eye sensitivity. But I also have a window behind me and you can see that that has the potential to wash me out because of the natural lighting. I left that just for an example. So when you do the mock interview practice with us, we're going to talk about what's in your background. What does it look like? And the most important part and most important thing that has changed is you. When I ask you, tell me about yourself at the interview, what are you actually saying? Are you talking to me about the skills? Uh, are you able to discuss what those skills are and are they the skills that I'm looking for as the employer? So I talked a little bit about this T-table chart and like I say, I absolutely love this slide. So what I do, and I still use this to this day, what I do is I take a blank piece of paper and I draw a T on it. Where I get this information is from the job description. So on the left hand side, I'm writing down what the job is actually looking for and I'm getting it right off the job description. I'm not sitting back pondering, thinking to myself, well, bitch, this job is looking for this. I am taking those words that are on the job description and putting them right on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I'm answering each one of those bullet points and showing the employer how I qualify. Now, do you see how else you can take this and put it on a cover letter? It will fit very nicely on it and you can have it on the left hand side qualifications or you know what, what your job posting is looking for and how I qualify. You can have that right on the top. Make it an easy read for human resources so that they can say, yep, this person not only read the job description, they are qualified and I'm going to interview them and I can tell that within three seconds. So let's kind of drill down a little more on this. So I'm looking at the job description or the job listing and it says that they're looking, uh, the position would be recruiting team members. So you'll see on the right hand side that I exceeded all recruitment goals by attending job fairs and sourcing new applicants from various job boards. One other piece I want to add in here is that if you can add numbers or percentages, you can make this even a more powerful statement. So I always say that you are the director of the story in my head. So let me be able to follow you along very easily and to really envision what you are trying to say both on your resume, on your cover letter, and in person. So if you could say, uh, you know, I not only exceeded all the recruitment goals by attending job fairs, I also brought five team members on board who as a result brought our sales up 22% or brought our sales up $1,000 a week. But I'm just saying if you can use percentages and numbers, make this story even more concrete, 
boy, now I'm really following you and you've got my attention as the interviewer. I want to, before I go on to the next slide, just tell you just very quickly a story. Um, you know, previous to this role, I was the operations manager of a nonprofit. And in that role, I interviewed a lot of people who were older. And oftentimes they would say stuff to me, they'd tell me their age. Now, it's illegal for me to ask you how old you are at an interview, uh, even during the job. But the thing is, is that the only time I can ask you for your birthday is on the first day of employment when you're filling out your paperwork. And that is more for benefits. So for like life insurance, health insurance, uh, that type of information. But actually that usually only just stays within the human resource world. Uh, it's not out in the public. But here's what I find. When I ask you, tell me about yourself when I'm interviewing you, you say stuff to me like this. Well, I am 57 years old. Uh, I only want to work a few more years and then I'm out of here. I plan on retiring at age 62. Well, now what does that have to do with the job? And furthermore, if I ask you, tell me about yourself, what I want you to say is, I see myself working for you. When I ask you, when I say, where do you see yourself in three years, three to five years, or what are your career aspirations? I want you to say back to me, I see myself working for you. And hopefully I will have gotten a promotion. Don't tell me how old you are. Don't tell me what your, your plans of retiring are, even if you plan on retiring in three years. You know, the truth of the matter of life is that all we're guaranteed is right here, right now. We're not even guaranteed tonight. So we all might have plans to go somewhere in three to five years, but that doesn't mean that those are gonna even come true. You know, at our Walmart here, there is a gentleman who I am not real great at telling age, but I would say he's in his upper seventies, maybe 80. And he is the greeter at Walmart. And every time I walk into Walmart and he is working, he makes me feel so grand about being at Walmart, even if it is at the end of the day and I don't want to go and buy something for supper, for instance. When I walk in there, he's always happy to see me. He's very good at his job. I walked up to him one day and I said, you know, I have a personal question I'd like to ask you. And if you don't want to answer me, you don't have to, but I'm a job counselor. And he said, oh, go ahead and ask me. That's fine. What do you, what do you want to ask? I said, are you working here because you have to or because you want to? He said, I'm working here because I want to. He said, you know, after the pandemic happened and I was ending up spending all my time at home with my dog, uh, I realized that this is not what I thought retirement was going to be. So I needed to get back out and rub my elbows and, and talk to people. And he said, I got plenty of money. He said, that has nothing to do with it. So having said that, and since the pandemic happened, I want you to be very, very aware that many, many employers understand that retirement is not the what cracked up to what we thought it was going to be. You know, we were all spoon fed, live, work, retire, live, work, retire. Retirement is the end goal. Well, you know what? I was even during the pandemic at home and I thought, you know what? This is not what I want to do. I love interacting with people. So having said that, the employers are finally starting to recognize that too, that, yep, okay, you might have been laid off or you might have lost your job or the business might have closed due to the pandemic, but boy, you still have some valuable wisdom that I want to glean as an employer and that way we can all make some money. Okay, so... Remember that it is very, very important that if I'm looking at your resume, can I figure out how old you are? I have people who go back 30 years. Now, I had a gentleman who was a construction worker for 30 years and he wanted to get into something different because he didn't want to work swinging a hammer anymore. And he had on his resume that he had done construction for 30 years. In addition to that, even just starting out his resume, he said over 30 years of experience in construction, right as his objective, just right, boom, there it was. So I said to him, well, now what does that have to do with the job for one thing? And second off, um, we need to take that off because if you've got over 30 years experience and I figured that you probably started when you were 19, 20 years old, that makes you at least 50 years old, and you don't know where I stand as an employer. 
whether I want to hire a bunch of young people or whether I want to hire seasoned workers. The point is, is that you don't know. And if your resume isn't powerful enough to get you in to the interview, it's not worth much. You know, we do our resume to get to the interview. Now, clearly, once you get to the interview, they're going to realize you're not 20 years old. But you got the interview. Now you can convince me why you're the best person for the job. Now you can talk about how the wisdom that you have, you paid a high price for it and that you believe that you can apply it at the job. Ask yourself if the skills that you did years ago actually apply to this position. If they don't, stop talking about it. Consider using a combination resume instead of a chronological resume. What the, the combination resume does is it combines a functional resume, which has skills, a skill-based resume, and a chronological resume, which starts with your most recent job and goes back. You can use the combination where actually it's taken both resumes and combined them together. And it is absolutely wonderful because it points out more about your skills. So let's talk about networking. So networking, learn from the people who are doing, doing the work that you want to do. So uh, do I have competitive skills? that the job is looking for? Am I talking about them on the resume? Do, why do I want this job? Do I want this job? I want you to make sure that you're looking up the person, the company's mission statement. Get some insider tips by going on LinkedIn and see if they have any information on there about their the, the employer or the employees that are working. Uh, 75 to 85% of jobs still come from networking. Sheila? Looks to me like this is a great time for a question. Yeah, I was going to try to jump in before you started that slide. Um, I guess I'm going kind of fast today. <laughs> <laughs> you are on a roll. Um, we just had, you know, quite a few questions about, you know, the resume and age and things like that. So I, I wanted to put a couple of those in here right now. Yes. Um, so you had talked about. Um, you know, using numerics, you know, quantifying statements. Um, but what if you don't have any numerical me metrics to include on your resumes? You know, they haven't included things that involve percentages or dollars. Oh, that's okay too. I'm not saying that that's fine if you don't have them. What I'm pointing out is if you do have them. And, you know, some of the uh, job postings, so not every employer writes a really dynamic job description. Of course, we help them if they reach out and ask us, but for you, what I want you to do is reach out to us and us and have us help you to make that resume so that it is going to get you the interview. So we're only, go of course, we're always going to be truthful on our resume, but only to a point. Right, and if you don't have, if you don't have metrics, you can use examples of, you know, how you improved a process or, you know, Maybe if you got a compliment from a customer, those are all great things to include on a resume as well. Yes. Yeah. Anything where you can show a positive outcome is a good thing. Um, and then someone's asking about, you know, why we can't put all of our skills on a resume and if you should um, include the dates that you use that skill, you know, like if you had it for over 20 years, should you just put 10 on there, even though you have 20 to 30 years experience with that skill? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying is that why do I need to know you've got 30 years experience in you doing that skill? The deal is, is that, you know, we think that if I don't have this uh, chronological list on there on how long I have done this, that people are not going to realize how valuable I am. The truth is, is that when I learn a skill, I don't lose it. I can use it at every single job. So if I have done customer service, for instance, for the last 30 years, that does not mean that I don't know how to do customer service moving forward, but I do not want to be discriminated against because the person that's looking at my resume thinks that I'm too old for the job. I wanna be able to at least get into that interview and then talk to them about, you know, this is the value that I can bring to the table. So I, I've got all this experience in customer service and I learned the ins and outs on how to do and be an expert at customer service. So that brings us like the next standard up 
when it comes to being better at interviewing. You know, I, I was talking about the person who had the 30 years in construction. He was very offended. He said, well, I, I worked really hard. I, I'm very, very proud of my 30 years of experience. I said, you know what, you have every right to be proud of it, but it's stopping you from getting the interview. So you still can be proud of what you did, but make sure that your resume gets you the interview. Because if it doesn't get you the interview, it's not worth anything. You can still have it on the interview, but don't send that res or excuse me, have it on your resume, but don't be sending that resume out to people. If you need to feel so great about it, hang it on the wall. Frame it. That's fantastic. Be proud of what you've done. But the point is, is that the resume is to get you the interview. And if you're not getting the interview, my guess is, is that you've got too much information on your resume. And then, Glory, what are your thoughts on dates for employment and education? You know, on the resume, we have control over that if we include them or not. Um, what about applications, online applications, when it's required to put the dates on? Yes, that's an excellent question. So, first off, employers are not supposed to be asking you on applications your date of birth, but they still do. So what I always say is that you put zero zero in there for the year that you were born. So if you were born April 1st, I want you to put zero zero. Now, if they confront you at the interview and say, you know, you had zero zero listed here on your application and clearly you're not 24 years old. Um, can you explain that to me? I want you to say back to them, you know, I was protecting you. I know that you didn't realize that you can't ask that on the application, so that's why I wrote zero zero because I'm looking out for the company. Now, in regards to the year that you graduated, why do I need to know that? I don't, unless I'm talking your resume again now. So if they are requiring it on the application, you can't undo that. You have to answer whatever they're asking for if it's an application. But on your resume, if you have a bachelor's degree and you got it in 2003, why do I need to know that? How I want you to write it instead is Bachelor's of Science in Psychology, Bemidji State University, comma, Minnesota. That will fill up your line and your bullet point, but I keep the year off of it. Sula, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, that that was that sounds good, Glory. And I, I think I'll hold off some on, on these questions a little bit, let you get going again. Okay. All right. So here we go. Find the job that no one has posted. That is such a beautiful thing about networking. So that's why I want you guys to really be confident in talking with everybody and telling them, hey, I'm looking for a job. Do you know if anybody is hiring? Uh, the deal is, is that if you can find that job that hasn't been posted, you get to apply for it very quickly. Let me use this in a real life example. Getting back to the operations manager of the nonprofit. What happened was I would have people and we needed these precious people to come in and volunteer. So they did a lot of volunteering while they were looking for their jobs. Also had people who were coming out of jail who would come and do some volunteer work for community service. All different types of volunteers, many different ages. What would happen is the employer who was looking for the job would come in and he'd sit down and he would, for instance, make a donation and he would say, Gloria, you know, I, I got a, a job opening. Do you know if anybody is looking for a job? And I could turn around and say, I sure do. Not only that, you can use me as a reference because I know you're an excellent person. I know you're a great person of character. I know that you are punctual. I know that you're men and women of your word. And do you see how you can get that job and the employer never even had to post the job? So when you're feeling discouraged, I'm a strong believer in being thankful and grateful and giving back. Now, all right, I'm not telling you to be thankful and grateful because you're feeling discouraged. I'm telling you that when you feel discouraged, I want you to start to focus on things to be thankful and grateful for and start to give back. So there are all kinds of different areas where you can go do some volunteer work. Now, of course, I'm not saying volunteer for 40 hours. I'm saying maybe go do a couple hours. Get yourself back into that momentum so that you're creating relationships where people will think of you first because they know you're looking for a job. I still, to this day, have employers call me and say, Glory, I need some help. I, if I don't get some people to come work here, I'm gonna have to close my doors. So do you realize we are in such a unique situation in our society right now? It never used to be that way. It used to be where the employers kind of had the, the reign and the rule. 
they were the ones who told us the way it was going to be. Well, it's switched because the employers are in such dire need of help so that we can use this to our advantage. Let's talk a little more about teleconferencing. Like I said earlier, the good news about it is we are doing it right now. In this mock interview that we do with you, we're going to talk to you about your background. We're gonna to talk to you about your lighting. You know, one of the things, so I said that I've got lights are a little dimmer here, but I actually have uh, done a mock interview with somebody who they had it very, very dark. And the downside of that is that it implies you're hiding something. Another time they will, you can blur, I can blur this background or I can make it, I could even make it look like I'm in Paris right now. Don't do that when you're interviewing. And the reason for that is that if I were to move this way, half my face is cut off. Or I've got, it's called trailing, so that I've got like a almost light. I don't really know how to explain this, but it's it's light that's coming off of me. And it's distracting. You want the employer to be paying attention to you, not to the other dynamics that may be happening around your background. Dress as you would face to face. It is really, really interesting how us as human beings, when we dress fully, even down all the way down to our shoes, uh, we tend to interview better. I don't know why that is, but it puts you in a different state of mind. So dress as if you were face to face. Practice good eye contact. One of the reasons I don't like wearing sunglasses during a workshop is because you can't see my eyes. But I want you to look directly at the camera. You can't tell I'm looking at the camera right now, but now you can. If I were to talk to you this way, it feels completely different than if I'm talking to you, giving you good eye contact. How about smile? You know, a lot of times when I'm doing the workshop, I have a mirror next to me, not because I like looking at myself so much, but it reminds me to smile. And I, I, I love doing these workshops and I also want to present myself as friendly. When you're interviewing, you want to present yourself as friendly and that you get along well with people. So don't forget to smile. If you're doing a phone interview, you can hear a smile over the phone. Now, if you want to challenge me on this, call your best friend and say, hey, can you tell if I am smiling right now? It's amazing how you can hear a smile over the phone. Or I mean, I'll call somebody and right away, if I'm upset about something, I'll say, hello. All I'm saying is hello. And they're like, what is wrong? So again, you can hear that over the phone. Boy, this is another thing that's important is make sure that your audio is good. That's another uh, piece that we can help you with. So when we're doing the practice interview with you and then make sure you have a backup phone number handy. You know, one of the beautiful things about I love working with Sheila is that if we have something happen when we're setting up this workshop and so, say the Internet went down, I can call her. She answers the phone and she says, okay, Gloria, it's working on my end. I don't know why it's not working on yours or let's troubleshoot this and make it work. But make sure that you have a backup phone number handy when they call you in for the interview. So let's role play this out. I call you up and I say, I'd like you to come in for an interview tomorrow at the choices are 10 a.m. or two o'clock. You know, we were taught the early bird gets the worm. The early bird does get the worm, but not when you're interviewing. If you have a choice between 10 a.m. and 2 o'clock, I want you to pick 2 o'clock. All right. So I pick 2 o'clock. Well, great. I'll be. I'll come in at 2 o'clock. Um, what type of interview is it going to be? And say so they're going to tell you it's a teleconferencing interview. Okay, wonderful. Um, <clears throat> do you have a backup phone number that I could get from you just in case I end up having some troubles with my system? System works really good. My camera works really good. I'm going to be prepared for the interview, but I would like to have a phone number just in case I run into any troubles. So that's what that have that backup phone number handy means. All right, next one. Let's talk a little bit about you. How do you feel about looking for employment now and do those feelings show? So the deal is, is we've talked a little bit about how do you feel? How has your job search been going so far? But, you know, I work with a lot of people who they're very frustrated because their previous job just didn't do them right. They ended up having some troubles at that previous job. So now, do you think that it's appropriate to go to the interview and talk about that? The answer is no. When I'm working with employers, I always ask them, what's the most important thing to you when you're hiring somebody? And they have always said two things, and it's in one form or another, but they've always said these two things. Glory. 
one of the things that's most important to me is my reputation. I work very hard to have a good reputation in our community and I'm not willing to sacrifice that for anybody. So if you go in and you're talking to the new employer badly about that previous, previous job that you had and how they did you wrong, that new employer is thinking to himself, goodness, what are you going to say about us if you don't work out here? So you won't get the job based off just off of that. And then the second piece is the employers have always said, Glory, I want to know if they're going to get along with the great employees I already have in place, or are you going to come in and be a troublemaker? So you want to be able to say at the interview, I'd even put this on my resume, get along well with others. Practice the golden rule where I treat people the way I would want to be treated. If you put on there, practice the golden rule, make sure you write where I treat people the way I want to be treated. Because I just recently had somebody say, yeah, I practice the golden rule. I'm like, tell me more. Well, it's where I treat people the way I've been treated. That's not the golden rule. That's the opposite. So again, make sure that you're clear. If you have feelings about your previous employer that you're struggling with, practicing forgiveness or getting over it, please reach out to us because we're experts at that too. We understand what it's like to work for a difficult employer and then you know how it can affect your future. But are you going to continue to let it affect your future or are you going to get some guidance from us and let us help you so that the buck will stop there and that you can go on with your career and get a decent paying job? The skills that you have gained, do you know what they are? You know, I work with a lot of people who I just talked to a lady recently, just a pleasant person, and she was talking about, you know, uh, I have gone on GCF learning, which she, I would like for you to put that into the chat. Um, GCFFreeLearning.org is a website that I want you to check out if you want to get refreshed on some of the different programs that are out there. For instance, Excel, Microsoft Word. This, this is a free website that you can talk about at the interview. I don't mean the website, but you can say, you know what? Some of the things have changed. Some of the things that have changed with me is that I have done a refresher course in Excel or I have done a refresher course in Outlook. So the point is, is that do you know what those changes are? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're not just sitting around watching TV eating bonbons. The truth is, is that if you're going on Minnesota Works and you're doing job search, and you're looking at the different jobs and trying to decide which job to apply for, do you know that that could be looked at as research? So you can talk about that at the interview if it applies to the job. I also want you to feel confident in, what, in talking about what makes you a better candidate. What makes you a better candidate today than you were the last time that you interviewed? Or what makes you a better candidate today than the last time you were working? And what are your goals? You have to be able to talk about them if I'm going to ask you, where do you see yourself in three to five years? So I was talking to a guy recently and <clears throat> he told me nine different times how old he was. And here's the thing, he was younger than me. So he was saying over and over and over, yeah, well, for my age or, you know, I'm getting too old to do. Or I told him, I said, you've told me nine times how old you are. And why do I need to know that? He said, what are you counting? I said, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm counting because the truth is, is that I don't believe you can do any job because you're too old. And guess what else? You just convinced me you can't do the job because you're too old. You know, there is a proven fact that your brain starts to agree with whatever you're telling yourself. You can check it out, do some research. This is true. So I tell myself I'm getting younger and younger every day. Now, does the clock line up with what I'm saying? Probably not, but do I care? No, I can still come in and do a mighty fine job at my job and take pride in what I do. Are you being seen as being overqualified? You know, this is where <clears throat> when you're going back to those 30 years of experience, employers may be looking at that like 30 years of experience in the same industry. You know what? You consider that a blessing. I consider that a curse because that means you're going to come in. You're going to be set in your ways. You're not going to do the job the way I want you to do it. And you're going to try to tell me how to do the job. Now, I'm not saying that's you. I'm saying that's how the employer may be looking at it and won't interview you just based off of that. 
you want to make sure that you are tailoring your resume towards what the employer is looking for, not what you think should be on there, but what the employer is looking for. I had a gentleman who called me up and he's like, Lori, I'm not getting any interviews and I don't understand why. I said, let me take a look at your resume. And I looked at his resume and down at the bottom, he had 25 years ago, he was a truck driver. He was CDL over the road. And I said, is there a reason you got this on here? Are you applying for truck driving? No. He said, I'm just very proud. I was a truck driver, man alive. He said, it was hard to get that CDL. I said, well, you know what? That's great that you're proud of it, but that's the reason you're not getting the interviews is because they're thinking to themselves, why would you want to come work for me if you get a truck driving job, which probably pays more, you're going to bail on me and go work for them. I said, remove that from your resume. And you know what he did? He got, he removed it, got interviewed and was hired within like a week. So I'm just saying, make sure that you're not looking like you're going to bail on the company and go somewhere else because you've got too much information on there or you're presenting yourself as being overqualified. Keeping the momentum up, we talked about that. Uh, letting your narrative be negative. What are you saying to yourself? Are you telling yourself you're too old? If you are, it's going to come up in the interview. And you're going to say it. It's like a Freudian slip. You just speak it out loud and you're like, why did I say that? But you could lose the job just based off of that. I interviewed somebody one time and they're like, you know what? I just want to work for three years. I'm going to uh, retire and I'm out of here. Well, you know what? You're not the type of person I'm looking to hire. I want to hire somebody who I know is going to stay with me. And that's how I'm going to make the most money. I'm going to put time and effort into training you to do the job the way I want it done. Not because I'm a control freak, but I'm the one who says, I'm the supervisor and I'm the one who says the way the job needs to be done. I want to be able to know that you're going to do it the way I'm asking you to do it and that you're going to be with me forever. Are you updating your skills? You know, through the Career Force, we have what's called the Dislocated Worker Program, too. I don't run that program, but if you do need some updating on skills and say you need to pay for a certificate, um, maybe need to complete one class in order to get your bachelor's degree, reach out to us uh, and see, we will refer you to see if you qualify for that program or not. But again, we're a valuable resource that we can help you with and help so that you can go out and get the job. Don't let that certificate or, you know, some other uh, menial thing stop you from applying and from getting the job. How about, are you listing too many accomplishments on your resume? I'm gonna give you a real life example here. So when I was working for the nonprofit, I had a retail position open and I had a gentleman who applied who was a heck of a forklift driver. I mean, the guy could do everything under the sun with the forklift, according to his resume. We didn't own a forklift. Now, in addition to that, I assumed, which this is what we have to do as hiring managers, we have to figure out who am I going to interview out of these 10 people that applied, because the company's only going to pay me to interview three. You know, we always think, well, they're for sure going to interview me because look at how talented I am. But are you actually presenting yourself what the company's looking for? Or are you presenting yourself as a forklift driver? Because that poor forklift driver, I never did interview him because I assumed, this is what we have to do, I assumed that as soon as he got a forklift driver job, he would bail on my little retail position because I assumed forklift drivers probably get paid more than what I'm willing to pay the person or what I'm allowed to pay the person, not willing, what I'm allowed to pay the person. Point is, maybe the guy is sick of sitting on a forklift. Maybe he never wanted to be on a forklift ever again, but his resume never portrayed that. So I never interviewed him and I never found out. How are you talking? Are you listening? Are you listening to the questions? Are you listening to what the job posting is saying? Are you actually lining up your resume and also reading it before you go in for the interview and really tailoring your comments towards what the employer is looking for? How about are you behaving like you did when you were in charge? Goodness, I have worked with so many people who say to me, Lori, I was a supervisor for the last 20 years and I'm done with being a supervisor. I just want to go in and do my job, do a good job at it and come home. I don't want to be the one in charge anymore. Okay, well, if that is the truth, then you need to behave, meaning you need to behave where you're not in charge anymore, where you're able to follow. 
And I would bring that up at the interview. I would say, you know, when you're looking at my resume, you're going to see that a lot of times I was a supervisor. But I want to let you know that I do not want to be in the supervisor role anymore. So I not only can be an excellent leader, but I can be a great follower too. And I am willing to come in and do the job the way you want it done. Do the job the way that you, te- you, you taught me how to do it. I can have the guarantee that I will do it that way. We've talked also about losing momentum. It's very, very important to make sure that you make some goals for yourself. And pat yourself on the back when you achieve those goals. So for instance, one of the goals I would make if I was you is to make an appointment with one of us workforce development representatives here at the Career Force. In that follow-up email that you're going to get tomorrow, uh, Sheila's going to include the Career Force locations. Take a look at where the Career Force is closest to you if you've never been to one. Reach out to us, uh, call us, and set up an appointment. You know, it could even be a career exploration appointment. It, it, what it's called is a one-on-one appointment. Here's the beauty of this. We meet you right where you're at, but we don't leave you there. We pour into you all of our resources we have available to us so that you can go out and get the job. Let's talk a little bit about letting your negative be your narrative. So remember when I was talking about the employers are saying that the most important thing to them was their reputation? If you are struggling with this or if you were let go, please reach out to us and let us talk with you and talk through this and give you some guidance on how to rise above what has happened to you. Um, A lot of this too, if you were fired, I don't want you to ever, ever, ever say at the interview when they ask you, why did you leave your last job? Well, I was fired. First off, I do not want you to assume they're even gonna ask you that question anymore. Employers, one, don't wanna know don't offer them that information unless you are asked that question but if they say to you why did you leave your last job and you were fired i want you to say i left my last job because i was involuntarily separated and as a result it has brought me here to you today now i had to practice that in the mirror because if i'm going to say i was involuntarily separated if i look like i'm having a root canal while i'm saying it you're not going to believe me and it's kind of a mouthful But I had to practice it. I was involuntarily separated. And as a result, it has brought me here to you today. I was involuntarily separated. I'm not saying I was fired. Keep that word out of the interview. So let's talk about not updating your skills. So one of the things that I want you to consider is coming on board and working for us at the state of Minnesota. So Sheila, would you put in the chat uh, mn.gov backslash mmb backslash careers. Go on that website. Yes, we do post all of our jobs on Minnesota Works, but the, the um, website that Sheila is sharing with you right now is only state of Minnesota jobs. And so it helps you to narrow down some of those jobs. But wow, we have got some decent paying jobs with excellent benefits. Come on board with us. We don't care how old you are. What we care about is that you can come in and do the job. Take a look at that website. Uh, Another program that I just briefly talked about was the Dislocated Worker Program. Again, I don't run that program, but if you're interested in it and you're going to set some goals, make one of those goals to call the Career Force and ask about the Dislocated Worker Program. That is designed to help you to get to a place where you can get a job and get a better job. Another resource we have out there is Coursera. I want you to be careful with Coursera, though, because one of the things I don't like about it is when I went on the website, there's always a pop-up box that says, please pay $49 for a monthly fee. Then you'll have access to all these classes. Don't do that. Goodness, especially if you're not working, you can't afford it, and you're unemployed, don't be paying Coursera $49 a month. Instead, just be aware of where you're driving in the the website. So there are a lot of free resources on there and there's even certificates on there. Just have to be very savvy about where you're looking and making sure that you're not paying for anything if you don't have the money. And again, now some of those too would qualify again through the Dislocated Worker Program. So I know that, um, you know, one of the uh, examples I use for Dislocated Workers, if you have, you're one class away from your bachelor's degree. 
You can't get financial aid just for one class, but dislocated worker program may be able to pay for that one class so that you can get that knowing that you can get a better paying job because you have a bachelor's degree. Now, it also has to be in an industry that's hiring, but I'm not going to get into all those details. I'm just saying if you are that client and you have some type of plan, but you don't have the funding to do it, reach out to us. All we can do is say no. So, Sheila, I think it's a great time for some questions. That's good, Glory, because you have a lot of questions coming your way. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go back up to earlier when you were talking about networking. Um, yep. Someone had mentioned that often if you send a second email, it will eliminate you from consideration. So won't rewriting your resume and submitting it again in a different way, you know, eliminate your chances for the position? Hmm. So that's why I want you to tailor your resume towards the job itself. So you don't run into that problem. I don't know the answer to that one where it would eliminate you because I think that's individually company based. So I know that if you were to apply through the state of Minnesota and you revamped or, or uh, re-edited your resume and applied it again, you are allowed to do that. But I don't know the answer to that for every company. The point is, is make sure that your resume is tailored towards that job you're applying for and it's the best you can make it. Also, reach out to us because we'll quickly review it, the resume, before you do actually apply. I always look at when you're applying, look at it as that I'm going to give my best presentation of who I am, and I got one chance here. This is it. Okay, and then how do you balance using wording from the job posting to get past the initial scanning bots without sounding like you just copied and pasted it into there? Well, that's a really excellent question. And I always say, you want to use the words off of the job description. So uh, it doesn't need to be custom cut and pasted, but let me give you an example. Let's say that you have um, experience being a customer representative, but the job posting is calling it a customer service. Now to me, customer representative and customer service are the same, but the bot is not going to recognize it as that. You need to use the word customer representative if that's what the company's asking for, even though your job title might have been customer service. You use the words that the company is looking for. Okay, and then when doing some online applications, they ask if AI can review the application, artificial intelligence. And I always select no. Do you have any suggestions for this? So I guess what I would do first, Sheila, would you put in the chat GPT? Chat GPT? Yep. So with chat GPT, what Sheila is putting in there, I really want you guys to capture this. You can have chat take a look at um, what you put on your resume. So in other words, let's say that you've got the job description. You can put that right in the job description in there and then see what AI responds on what type of information you should actually have on your resume. Another resource that we have is, um, Sheila, do you remember what that one is called mm -hmm. where you can put your um, resume? It's job, job scan? Job scan, yes. Yeah. So job scan is another good one that you can use where it, what it will do is it will take a look at the job description and take a look at your resume and make sure that it actually is lining up with what the company is looking for. Okay, <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what if you've had a job for 20 years and you're starting a new career? Do you just not list the dates for that for your most recent career? Well, what I would say is I have 10 plus years experience. Mm -hmm. And again, now that's on your resume. So, or the most, the farthest that I would ever go is 15. So you're gonna have on there, I would just do your years and I would just do it at 10 plus years. Or again, the most I would go is 15 years back. You need to ask yourself, can I figure out how old you are by looking at your resume? Even though age discrimination is illegal, it happens all the time. 
So I want to be able to have <clears throat> this resume be powerful enough so that I can get the interview. Now I'm a real live person and I can't just throw you away like I can your resume. So what do you suggest, Glory, if you worked for a place for 23 years, <clears throat> but now you want to start in a new career and you don't have skills for that specific new job you're applying for? So one of the things, too, I would do is, again, reach back out to us because this is more of a personalized where we can really drill down on um, what type of career you're looking to get into, whether you would need a certificate, whether you need uh, any type of experience. And then I believe that many of us, all we have to do is transfer our skills into that new role, but it's all in, in the way you're presenting yourself. So remember that if I have all this experience in driving a forklift, but I want to go into customer service, how would I do that? Well, goodness sakes, a person who drives a forklift has a lot of customer service. You just need to transfer it into that. So, you know, if the customer wants a, a truck, a semi that's loaded, uh, what I would write if I was getting into customer service and getting away from forklift driving is I would talk about reviewed orders, confirmed, uh, you know, what what needed to be ordered, what uh, was missing, um, confirm the inventory. So do you see how that's still customer service? So the key there is one, I want you to look at it in your mind that I am going to transfer the skills that I have and then Two, in the presentation, I'm going to present myself that I can do this job. And now, again, this gets more where I can give you even more information when you reach out to the career force because we are experts at really helping you with this. So I don't want to take up the too much more time on this subject, but the key is transferring skills. I can transfer the skills that I have into my new role. So at, at this age, you know, over 50, um, do big corporations still want someone, you know, who's nearly 60 years, years old? You're right about being valuable, but how do we convince them to give us a chance to prove that, even if we're close to retiring? Well, that's what I'm saying is that it's all in your presentation with your resume first. And then when you go for the interview, first off, you need to look at yourself as valuable. What does age have to do with this? You know, it gets so frustrating when we have been told, uh, people will say, well, for your age, you shouldn't be doing that. Who says that? I, so, I mean, I, I'm not going to let you dictate for my age what I can do and what I can't do. I'm going to tell you what I can do, and age has nothing to do with it. I mean, if I want to go horseback riding, I'm going horseback riding. Okay, if I fall down and get hurt, you know what? That would probably happen when I was 30 years old, too. So the point is, is that age has nothing to do with this anymore. I want to be able to make sure that my resume will get me the interview. And once I'm at the interview, I'm going to convince you why I'm the best person for the job. And in addition, my wisdom is going to make you a lot of money. And in turn, I'll make some money too. Boom. There it is. Do you think anybody says that in an interview? No. What they say instead is they talk to me about how old they are. They talk to me about their retirement. They talk to me. I just need, I just need to, you know, fill in the gap here a little bit. Uh, all I need is just to work, you know, for a few more years and then I'm out of here. Why do I need to know that? And why would I want to hire you if you're going to come in with that type of attitude? I want you to come in instead and say, you know what? I believe I can make you a lot of money because I've learned everything the hard way. And I am an excellent worker. I'm going to show up. I'm not going to be texting on my on the job. I'm not going to be on my cell phone. I'm not going to be talking to my friends day in, day out in the bathroom. Do you see how we have got some skills that are, again, we're like one step above a lot of the workforce, but we aren't recognizing it as that. Instead, we're recognizing it as I'm just too old. Well, I want to challenge you. If you're too old, why are you looking for a job? I know that sounds kind of harsh, Sheila. I don't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gary. Um, everybody wants to know why is it recommended to choose the afternoon interview time slot versus the morning? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. I wanted to finish that up, but I got on to another, another subject. 
The reason is because everybody will be compared to you. So I'm going to give you a real life example. When I was on an interview panel recently, and I just kind of sat back and thought, I'm going to see if this is still true. So what happens is that we had interviewed eight different people. Good Lord, that's a lot of people. The last person that we interviewed, we compared all those eight people to that last person. In addition, we could barely remember the first person that we interviewed, but boy, we could remember the eighth. That's why you always want to be the last, if possible. No, you're not going to always know that you're the last one. But if I'm giving you an option to, would you like to come in at 10 or 2? You always pick the last interview. Okay, and this might be of interest to several people. How do you address the question of requested salary? I say what I need, but they are offering much less. But I still want to, to interview and be considered. That's an excellent, excellent question. So, Sheila, would you put in careeronestop.org? So you can go on to careeronestop.org and find out their salary range before you even go to the interview and before you apply. So then you can decide whether or not you want to even apply. The second piece is, is that if you've got experience in the, the role, now I'm just pulling these numbers out. Let's say that the salary range is 20 to $22. You've got experience in the role that you're applying for. Everybody else who's going in there is gonna say $22 if they've got experience. People who don't have experience, they're probably going to say $22 also, but let's say that they say 20. What I want you to do is I want you to go right in the middle. I want you to go $21 when they ask you what is your salary expectations because you do have the experience, so you're not going to be on the low end, but you're going to show them that you are, and you can say this to them, you know, I'll, I'll start at $21, but I would actually like to have a salary review maybe after 90 days. Uh, and you'll see what an excellent worker I am and that I really can bring you in money. Uh, and then maybe you can put me up to 22. So, Sheila, it's 11 o'clock on the dot. Yeah. So, folks, one of the things that we do, too, is we do go through the chat and scour them. Remember that you can reach out to your local career force and talk to someone like Sheila and myself. We are located all through the state of Minnesota. And we've got great answers for you. The beautiful thing is, is if we don't have the answer, we have resources that we can find out the answer and we'll get back to you. Um, I am really, really excited that you're coming back into the workforce. If you haven't been with us for a while, come on and work with the state of Minnesota. We need some help. And bless you. You can go get a job. I know that you can, and I want you to believe that you can. So I'll see you in the working field. Okay, have a wonderful day.